Okay, so what we're looking at today guys is chromatography and how to do it. Now, I'm going to do it a bit differently in that I'm going to show you images and those images will give you the method and I'm going to speak over it as opposed to doing a live video. So the first step is uh, to get a ruler and measure off, uh, we're using a pencil, a 2 centimeter line. So put a dot there and then you're going to draw a straight line. Once you've drawn that line, you're going to take a blue felt tip and you're going to place a dot on the chromatography paper. Uh, so you're going to place the blue dot on one side of the line and you're going to place a black dot on the other side of the line. Now it doesn't really matter um, what colour you use because it's going to be loads of different colours. It's up to you what colour you want to choose. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to separate the colours into the parts that they're made of and so you'll see that some colours are just a pure colour and they'll only have one colour throughout whereas some other felt tips you're going to find their colour will consist of a number of colours that have been joined together and basically what we're doing is we're separating them by the process of chromatography so in my example I've used a blue and black felt tip Right, so next what you're going to want to do is just line up the paper, the chromatography paper, against your beaker. That's going to give you an indication of the amount of water you are going to add to your beaker. The idea here is that you do not want to get the water above the pencil line that you drew. Your The watermark must be below the pencil line and it should not touch the dots that you've drawn on uh, because you want the water to be absorbed by the paper and to carry the ink as far as it can go so make sure you've got it lined up and you can roughly see where the water level should once you're happy with the mark just uh, fill it up uh, fill up your beaker with water and remember make sure that it's w below the pencil mark and make sure that it is below the felt tip points that you have made otherwise your experiment will not work correctly so once you have that done you're happy with your water level just uh, place the chromatography paper into the beaker and uh, remember your water level should not touch the ink at any point and it should be below the line that you drew in pencil. Now I've used um, a splint to hold my chromatography paper in place. The way I did that was I basically just folded it over the chrome, uh, folded the chromatography paper over the splint, and that'll hold it in place. Now once you place it in, you need to remember place it in straight, and do not move the beaker. That's it. Once it's done, it's set just leave it there and there you can see uh, Mr. Gledhill in the background what a legend what a legend uh, thumbs up for Mr. Gledhill so if you see in this video give a thumbs up just for Mr. Gledhill see how many thumbs up we can get uh, so yeah once you've set it in place just do not move it after this point and so what you'll start to notice is over time uh, the colors within the felt tip pens will start to separate and they form some really beautiful and amazing colors uh, and it shows you what this color that you had originally what colors it was made up of uh, so then what you could do is you can work out what's called the RF value um, you gotta give this experiment quite a bit of time and as you do uh, it'll separate out into colors now the water which is the solvent will continue to rise and the markers of the pen so the thing that's that was able to dissolve in the solvent so in this case it was the felt tip pens they will remain behind depending on how soluble they are within the solvent now the solve the solvent will leave a mark right at the top right uh, so once the solvent, i.e. 
the water stops moving what you're going to do is you're going to pencil mark it off just like I've done and so that's the total distance your solvent has moved after that point you can now calculate uh, your RF values for different points now it is a bit tricky to do it in real life because obviously there's not really a fixed point at which the markers have stopped uh, but we could just go for the middle point uh, it'd be a lot easier and a lot better set up in an exam question and you will have some exam style questions to do while you're doing the practical so let's have a look at how to actually work out the RF value of any one of these points from the colors that have separated. Now as you can see right at the top of my chromatography paper I've penciled off where the solvent stopped moving. So that's where we got up to in terms of the water. So I got pretty much to the top before all the colors had separated as far as I could tell. Now. Uh, so what I'm going to do, number one, I'm going to record the total distance. That's the distance from the bottom pencil line to the top pencil line. That's the total distance the solvent moved. In this case, if you look carefully, uh, I've placed the ruler there, it's 13 centimeters. So my total distance in which the solvent traveled was 13 centimeters. Now let's say I want to work out the RF of the pinkish color. Um, on the left hand side so I've got that nice beautiful blue and I've got that nice pinky purpley color so I'm gonna take the midpoint of that purple color and I'm gonna see how much uh, what's what distance it moved from the bottom line so looking from the bottom line to the I can see that it's moved approximately nine centimeters so from 13 to three and a half centimeters the difference is nine and a half centimeters um, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take that nine and a half centimeters and divide it by the total distance of the solvent which in this case is 13 so it'll be nine and a half centimeters divided by 13 and a half well 13 sorry centimeters that will give me my RF for the pink point uh, I can do the same thing for every other color that I see on the chromatography paper and that is how you calculate your RF value. So that's again, in this particular pink case, it was uh, nine and a half centimeters divided by 13 centimeters. And that'll give you your RF value.